Hello everyone and welcome back to 1874 at home. This is our second edition of this now. Thank you all for watching it last week, obviously, with my episode with Wayne. That seemed to go down really, really well. And what this is hoped to be is really just a relaxed chat with some of the players, management and board members and just seeing where it goes, see how they are, see how they're living in lockdown, what different types of things that they're doing and just a period of reflection really over the last however many years that the person may have been at the club and we'll just have a look and see how far the club's moved on, how they've enjoyed their time. And as you can see today, I'm joined by the captain of 74, Matt Woolley. Matt, how are you doing? Very well, thanks, mate. Are you? I'm not doing too badly. So how are you doing then? What type of things are you doing at the moment in lockdown that maybe you wouldn't have done during the football season or obviously whilst you'd normally be out working properly? Yeah, well, that'd be the, the missus getting the list of jobs out for me. So <laughs> uh, we've, we've been in the garden, doing all the gardening. Garden looks tip-top, looks like Wembley. So... Um, that's literally it. The odd jobs around the around the house. Tied of the garage last weekend. That was um, eventful. Finding all sorts of rubbish in there. So yeah, the good old boring stuff. But it is what it is, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I think mean, it sounds like you've had a far more uh, boring time than I've had. Really, I don't even think I don't want to do that, and I've got nothing to do. Um, but now that the season's over, how proud are you of the lads' performances over the last year? I mean, we came over so many different um, hurdles with injuries to players to go behind in games and coming back to win. How proud are you the performances from all the lads? Yeah, really proud. Really proud of the achievements. And um, I know we're, we're not counting it as a season with uh, the FA, but to us it existed, it happened. And yeah, some of the games on there, you'll we'll never forget them and the run we were on. Um, yeah, everyone from the, the management, the players, the coaches, every, everyone's just had a great season. So it's one we'll look back on fondly on what it'll be ever be tarnished with what happened but it, it is what it is I suppose So what was your reaction to it then obviously we spoke briefly um, in my column a few weeks ago to it being null and voided some players took a more vocal approach um, to it on social media there's a couple of players that spring to mind for that but obviously you took a bit more of a, a diplomatic uh, reaction but now it's sort of settled in and obviously there's a reaction to League 2 going down points per game by the looks of it and League 1 haven't decided yet but their season's come to an end What's your reaction to it now? Obviously, it seems like different leagues getting different treatment to the one that we've had. Yeah, uh, and that's obviously frustrating, disappointing. Um, it makes a bit of a mockery, I think, in a lot of ways about the, the non-league pyramid. Um, so the conference and conference north are still not a decision made, but everyone else has decided it's null and void and, it, and that's it. So it's very frustrating from that point of view and a bit disappointing that we've been sort of... Um, treated differently, which obviously isn't the idea of the the non-league pyramid and all that sort of stuff. So it, that obviously is a frustration and it's disappointing. But at the end of the day, the decision has been made and obviously the people who made it have made it for some reasons, not that they've been um, um, spoke about freely or really given us an insight into those decisions on why they've made them. But... I think they're traveling for the right reasons and obviously there's a pandemic going on at the moment which we're all part of and all feeling so it's I think you still look at it diplomatically and say it's been done for safety reasons it's just a shame maybe that they made it a little bit early but that's that's hindsight I suppose. I mean with you look at the Premier League hoping to come back on the 12th of June I think the dates that have been set in some ways are you quite glad you know from your own perspective and protecting your family that actually the season was ended in the first place um, that you aren't having to go back into a situation like many Premier League players are speaking out about that you could then go back and play but you would never be too sure and not entirely sure that it'd be safe to do so. Yeah, um, I think obviously that's the reason decisions were made. So, um, yeah, it, the family comes first and safety of everyone comes first. Not just my family, but everyone involved in every other club in the country, really. Um, we've got to put ourselves first on this one, but obviously the money in the Premier League is significant amounts of money which is dictating on them coming back rightly or wrongly I'm sure we've all got our own views on that yeah exactly so we spoke earlier in the week about your background in football you've played at clubs such as Matt Town and their youth set up Congleton Racing Club Warwick and Nutsa before finally moving to 74 in 2013-14 how would you describe your time in football so far obviously it's quite rare to find a player that stays so committed to a club at this level because quite a few can move around freely, whether it works out with their jobs, etc. But you've been at 74 for a while. How have you found it being at the club and the transition over time and your uh, experience in football previously? I think it obviously helps to come to a good club. Um, so it's ran properly and it's got great support, which is a big factor for, for non-league teams and non-league players. It's much easier 
walking out on a pitch when you've got two or three hundred people watching rather than just a few men in the the odd dog here and there. Um, so <laughs> that's one of the reasons, and you know, it's local to me, um, and I've always been treated very well by the club, and that, and that obviously goes a long way. Um, so yeah, that, they're probably the reasons why I've decided to stay where I have, and it's been really enjoyable. If you're enjoying your football, then it makes it much easier to stay somewhere. Luckily, I've played in most weeks, which again is a big factor. A lot of people just want to play football. So yeah, I think I've sort of found a club where it fits me, and I fit the club a little bit. So it's um, it's just it's we've gone from there. Really, it's worked out really well. I mean, watching your performances over time, I mean, when we started watching 74, I think I was about 11. So it's quite a while ago since I started watching the progression over time. But watching your performances year on year on year, do you feel you're almost just getting better every single year you're playing? I mean, this season, the role you played, I, I couldn't think of another player in the league that fulfills the role that you do. Do you feel as though that you're getting better yourself? I mean, obviously it helps and you've got all the players around you who are all pulling the strings as well. But do you feel as though that your football's getting better the more you enjoy it? Yeah, definitely. The enjoy the enjoyment side of it is is massive to to any player. If they're happy in their football, then and confident, I suppose, comes into it as well, and you get a much better performance out of players. And that's evident from probably a Sunday league team all the way up to the top. Um, I think obviously I'm getting older now, and the game has changed a lot in terms of when I first started playing. It was four four two really, um, and it was either well you're up and down box to box. But the game's changed a lot in the time that I've been playing, both in non-league and in the professional game, and different formations have come in. And obviously, we now play a bit of a four-three-three, which suits me. Um, you know, I'm getting on a bit myself now, so maybe uh, the experience is starting to count for something, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, do you think it almost goes under the radar at some time, especially at this level? You know, everyone is passionate about the club because it's at this level everyone's got a role to play in with the clubs but obviously you as players you've all got jobs and some evening games you know think of one like Longridge this year you know it's a bit of a way to get there but you'll be working your normal day job you won't be able to necessarily see your family you'll be going there how does the preparation go for you on a match day obviously you're coming and leaving from work to going straight into a game how do you do that mentally prepare yourself as a player I think that's something that's probably underestimated by a lot of people um, who don't really realise the commitment it's not just the Tuesday night that you're talking about it's all the pre-season it's 365 days a year um, I think most players want to improve so they're constantly watching stuff um, we're actually quite big on some of the technical stuff that Wayne and Paul send out so we're watching that in the week and watching a little bit of the teams or set pieces whatever it is but you know you've got to keep yourself healthy you've got to keep yourself fit and train in the gym and, and that sort of stuff so and then, like you said, everyone's got, well, most people have got full-time jobs. I leave for work about six o'clock most days. Um, and then it's a case of where the game is getting away from work early where, where you can do. Um, I'm pretty lucky with my employers and they're quite flexible with me with that. Um, it's not for, for everyone, I suppose. Um, and then it's just racing like a blue arse fly to, to wherever the game is and sitting in the same rush hour traffic as or you guys coming to watch, I suppose, but it's then after you play your game and then it's you've not seen your family or, or players who've got young families um, probably get in the neck from the missuses and all that sort of stuff, but we do it because we love it, really. That's that's obviously what you see. It's not so much for the money. It's, it is just for the love of playing football, so it's, uh, yeah, it's great. So, obviously, I think it was the year that uh, we had the Vars run and then the backlog of fixtures. Was that the year that um, you had your son? It was, yeah. It was. Yeah, so describe, describe that year then, because obviously that must have been difficult for you in, in a whirlwind situation. You know, you're going from the hiatus of playing so well in the Vars, you have a life-changing experience in having a son, to then having a massive backlog of games where you might be playing, what, four times a week in some cases. Just describe that period of time, because that must have been really mental for you. Yeah, I suppose it's, it was a blur. It's still a blur now, um, with sleepless nights and... Uh, Football every night, probably <laughs> the doghouse most nights. <laughs> um, but no, it was a, obviously it was a great season that season. The run that we had, it was great. Um, obviously, the birth of my son was, was amazing as well. And um, I think he was, was, I remember around the sort of end of February sort of time, we having a few games where I started giving my phone to, to Bo to look after. Um, and then we drew the, um, 
the semi-finals with Thatcham. I mean, he was born just the week before the first the first game on the Monday or Tuesday. So um, yeah, best. Well, Mrs. wasn't pleased that I was going away for for a weekend to uh, <laughs> football so soon after him being born. Um, but yeah, it was a, a crazy time really. And then again, you look back and it was a great great memory. And it was great to be part of it and something to tell the grandkids about, I suppose, one day. <laughs> So obviously, we mentioned before that your workplace may be more flexible um, than others, but how do you juggle uh, your family life, your job with football? Is there difficulties? Because, you know, it's something that doesn't necessarily get spoken about as much. And you said before, for some people, the workplaces might not be as flexible as yours is. But how do you juggle that? Because it is, like you said, 365 days of the year, there's no escaping it, football all around. Even now, I'm sure Wayne and Paul are still sending you all stuff. You've got your fitness regimes and stuff that they send you. How do you manage it all? Um, I don't really know. To be honest, um, no. Obviously, it's it is difficult, um, but it's something that you, you commit to at the start of every season. Um, I'm, I try my best to try and fit everything in as much as I can do, um, and that's supposed where the dedication comes into it for for a lot of people. Um, your Friday nights down the pub. Uh, aren't a thing, but I suppose I'm at age, at an age now where a lot of my friends are getting married and stuff like that, so the odd game um, last season and during, a lot of them obviously went during the summer, but that affects the pre-season and it's difficult, in all honesty that is difficult, and especially being working and a young family, it is difficult but it's something that everyone's going to deal with, I suppose Or and that's why some people, it isn't for everyone some people decide they don't want to play at that level. They want to play lower or, or whatever they want to do or not play at all in some cases. So how much does 1874 mean to you and your family, obviously? I think your family, in a way, sort of encapsulates 74 as a whole. You know, you've had yourself, you've had Joe, you've had Jack, all play for the club. And then your dad helps out on the match days. He does the barbecues and stuff. It's fantastic burgers, if I may say. Um, do you think your family are an example of what 1874 is all about from top to bottom? I think so, yeah, because... Look, we're local to the area, so we understand why what's happened's happened and, and the reasons in you know, we're all pretty similar that we want to be involved. Um my dad's dedicated to his to his burgers. Um I'm sure he's out practicing now on a <laughs> Saturday afternoon already for next season. Um but no, it, you know, we we love being part of the club and we're treated well within the club and and that goes a long way, obviously. So um that it, we just just love being part of the club really, yeah. So what does 74 mean to you then when you see there and you put the shirt on every Saturday, what does it mean to you to play for a club like 874 with such a, everyone knows the reasons for why the club exists, but what does it personally mean to you when you play every Saturday and Tuesday? Yeah, obviously it's, I'm very proud to play, play for the side and, um, and lead the team out and, and I know what it means to, to the fans coming to watch. Um, so it's just a sense of pride more than anything. Um, and you know, playing for your local team is great. I know most of the most of the fans, in one way or another, see some of the pub after on a on a Saturday night. So it's it's great when we've had a good result, we've played well. Maybe not so good if we've not got the result we want. It might get a few penalties, but no, that's 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 part of it. And we are a local community club, so it, it's everyone being in it together and being part of it together. Win or lose. How important do you think the community aspect of the club really is? Obviously, you've seen the connections you made with Barnton this season and then obviously the outside charity work with Mind UK and the Samaritans. How important and crucial do you think that is to a club like ourselves? I think it's very important that we um, look to support these charities. Um, I know a lot of people involved with our club would probably do it if we didn't have a club. They'd still do those things, those charities. But it's great that everyone's got a sense of togetherness and everyone agrees that it's, it's right for everyone to be part of it. You know, any T-shirts or pictures or anything like that, all the, all the lads buy into it. We know it's an important thing and it's an important way that we maybe um, showcase ourselves differently to other clubs. Um, not all clubs have the same social side as we do. I suppose like yourself and um, Ash do a great job on that. The liaise with diff- these different kits that come out at the moment are fantastic. And I suppose it does separate us and make us different and probably an attractive club for players coming into it. They know there's going to be well-supported and involved in all these sort of things. 
So how important is that? Do you think for other players coming into your see from this season, we had like Harry Kane, Lee Nye, all coming into the club, and then quickly you see how quickly they buy into the club. It's not just a team, is it really? Basically, at some clubs, it's just a team and a pitch, and there's nothing behind the scenes necessarily to speak of. But for us, it's far more than that, isn't it? It is you buying into the whole ethos of the club. Yeah, and I think that's um, everyone will see the relationship between the players and the fans as well. Um, and that obviously helps bring it all together. So, you know, those lads who have come in, like you say, they bought into it straight away. Um, I think we're lucky that Bose has been here from the start. So he understands what the club's about, um, the values and, and what we want to do. So having that link, I suppose, from the fans and the, the board and stuff with Bo, the manager, and then to the lads in the changing room. I mean, a lot of us have been here a long time now, so we know what the club's about and, and what it stands for. So obviously for yourself, you've been here for a while and actually in your role as captain. What goes into being a captain of football clubs? Obviously, you've seen some other sports like cricket. They have a far more technical involvement where they'll be the sole decision maker on the field. But for your role as captain from a football club, you might not necessarily see those aspects happening. So what goes into your role as captain? Um, <laughs> running the fines. That's usually quite good <laughs> on a Saturday at one minute past uh, half past one. Seeing who's late, that's quite good fun. Um but no, I suppose I'm maybe a bit more of the link between um, what some of the players' feelings are and uh, thoughts are and uh, to Bo and Goody, really. Um, obviously, they might want to have some new ideas about various things and it's sort of my job to try and find out how well that'll go down and be received or and just maybe a bit more of that, really. I suppose on the pitch, I see my, my job as captain to try and get the best out of everyone. Uh, make sure we're all ready for the games. Um, so, yeah, I suppose that's how I see the job as captain. I mean, do you enjoy it as well? Obviously, it helps when you're winning, but there will have been times, um, like the season before last, you know, where things might have not gone too as well on the pitch as you'd like to hope. Do you enjoy your role as captain or what the stresses that it brings about? Um, yeah, I, I do. I do enjoy the job. Like I say, it's very difficult at some times. Um, I say every now and again, you've got to, you know, I'm playing with mates, but I've still got to have difficult conversations with some of them um, about performances. So maybe when we weren't um, performing as well as we could do uh, the year before, that was more frustrating, I think, because we were giving leads away or giving pointless goals away. Um, and I suppose that wasn't, like you say, it's easier when you're winning, put it that way. But um, yeah, you still have those conversations with people. So that's really the bit that isn't as, isn't as fun, but... It's something that I know I've got a responsibility to do um, every time I'm on the pitch. And even if I'm not involved, it's still my job to make sure the lads are ready to, to go out and play. And obviously, this season, we've had quite a few injuries to certain players. You know, Jack Pritchard, Ryan Mitchell, Ryan Jackson, and obviously your brother, Joe. I mean, that was a horrific injury away at Charlton a, a few years back, where it was something, if nothing really, just the way he turned on the ball. But how pleased were you to see him come back and feature against uh, Witten Albion after 518 days out injured? How pleased were you to see him come back playing? No, it was great to see Joe back because, I mean, he he did it the first time uh, mostly in a pre-season friendly. Um, yeah. He was out for a long time there and then was finally starting, I suppose, pleasing to watch. He was starting to get his, his, um, his touch back and feel for it and starting to be a bit more like himself before the injury, before, obviously, he, he managed to do it again. Um, I think at the game at Witten Albion, it was just great to get him back out there after he's worked so hard with all the physio, um, out running you know, on the bike and a lot of it on your own. I mean, if you're, you're there really, most most games, you'll see him out running around the pitch. Yeah. Everyone else is running on his own. So that dedication and commitment that he's shown and put in was rewarded with finally getting back on the pitch. So fingers crossed he's, he's ready to go pre-season and he's looking fit. He's out running on all the time at the moment. Um, so I think we'll hopefully have a player back next season. I mean, as well as Joe, you know, you've got Ryan Jackson there. Another wing will be coming back. Jack Pritchard, Ryan Mitchell, Jack Erlen, who they mentioned in that list before. They are like five new signings. I spoke to Wayne many times about it, and he says they are five new signings. The players that didn't really feature at all this year. Coming into next season, we're strengthening again before having to look elsewhere to bring anyone in. That must be a fantastic sign of you as a player. Yeah, I think it shows that the depth and adaptability in the players that have played this season as well. I mean, those lads we've talked about there would probably get in most teams, if not all teams, in the league. Um, so it'll be fantastic to get them back, being part of it again. Um, 
when they're all ready to do so. Like I say, Ryan Jackson, um, he's had a, another lot list of knee injuries. Um, so he's worked really hard to get back on the pitch. It's great to see him be, be involved and have our little class clown back. So, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's great to see them all hopefully coming back and coming through these injuries. Um, now, obviously, this season we perform many late comebacks as well in games, you know, whether it be to get a point or even overturn a, a two goal deficit and win. I mean, what was your favourite last minute comeback this season? I think there's a couple of couple of nominations. Um, the Skelmers Dale away, that was a that was a good one. Um, obviously, we came from two down that day. I didn't realise my penalty was so late actually until after the game. Yeah, um, and seeing the fans were mental on the far side and Callum took that one in. That was that was a good one. Uh, the Longridge one that, at home thought that was a that was a good last minute winner. Seeing Phil Lee, I think he's still running now to try and join the celebration. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think those two are probably ones that stand out. I reckon maybe the Skelmers Dale one just edges it, just because um, I think they tried to make it difficult for us that day um, in delaying and a bit of time wasting here and there. But yeah, I think probably Skelmers Dale just edges it. I mean, you mentioned there that they they've made it difficult. They you know used time wasting tactics. You can say how difficult is it to break a side down like that? At one point, they instructed to go five five zero in the formation. I mean, how difficult is that? in some ways, to break down a team like that. Obviously, we saw in the last game that we played against Barn Oswick, they did a similar thing, playing 4-5-1 for the whole game, not giving us any room or space to play. How difficult is that in some ways we have to adapt your game and try and find a way to break through these sides? Yeah, it is It is difficult. Um, I mean, you see that in the Premiership with Man City, for example. Teams do part the bus sort of thing at the moment um, against them and try and make it as difficult and, and sort of try and knock you out of your rhythm. But I suppose it's a sign of respect that we're a good side and teams want to they see get a point off us as a as a massive result for them. Um, but I suppose it's up to us on the pitch to maybe take a bit of responsibility or do something slightly different or call on that bit of quality when it's needed to, to break it down. Um, it might be a bit of a cliche, but if you do score early against a team that plays that way, then it obviously changes their game plan and can work into our favour because they suddenly have to change from what they've set out to do probably all week before they've played us. So, yeah, I suppose that's my thoughts on that one. Do you think the adaptability of the squad is really one of the main reasons why we have got so far where we have this season? You know, you look at the wingers, they're a good option. And there's this example, there's so many of them. You've got Carl Gardner, Lee Knight, Harry Kane, Taylor Kennelly. So many different players. Mike Corral, if he can go up there, Sam Hind can play there. You know, there's so many different players there. Do you think that is the, the strength and depth of our squad that we've got? So you can throw on another two wingers and you've got just as big a problem to face for defenders, but they're even fitter because they'll be fresher. They've not played the whole game before that. Do you think that's a massive example for why we are where we are? Yeah, I think it's got to be, yeah. You can't win win a league or compete and challenge the leagues with 11 players. It just it can't happen. So having a good squad with, with depth in it, and you talked about the wingers there, I think what's um, good about all four of those that you mentioned as our out and out wings, if you like, is they're all slightly different and play the game slightly different. So it probably um, poses a different threat to to the fullbacks really. And when they do get into good areas, generally the ball into the box or shot on target is is, is of quality. So yeah, having those having a deep squad is is massive in in doing what we want to try and to try and do. So obviously we mentioned the comebacks briefly just before. Where does the never say die attitude come from? Because it's got to take a lot of strength to keep going and persevering. You hear Wayne all the time say, keep playing, keep playing, get it wide. It's become a bit of a joke now um, from this season. But where does that attitude come from? Because you've got to keep going. It's one thing saying it, but to keep doing it and keep going every single game we play. Where does that come from for you as a player and then also for the team itself? I think it's, I mean, in the start of pre-season, we all signed up and agreed on what we wanted to do and the way we play the game we knew we needed to be fit fit than everybody else um, and I think that's that's been a factor so you know Wayne and Paul have been instrumental in getting us fit enough to be able to do that and then giving us the confidence to keep on keep on playing um, we're not designed really to start lumping balls forward because we, it doesn't work for us we have, we've got a little Scotty up there <laughs> so I think teams would like us to lump it up to him, but 
on the floor where it's at his feet, then that's where we, we come into our own. So, you know, Wayne's right when he says get it wide and be patient with the build up. Um, there's no point just putting them all in the box just for the sake of it. So um yeah, I suppose it's a mental a mental decision that we all bought into early. Um and then as a player on the pitch, it's just having that self belief and belief in your teammates. Um, again, it's it's much easier when you're winning games to to have that belief that we are going to score or we are going to get a chance or we're going to get one. So it's yeah, it's um, a mixture of those combinations really. I think. And you mentioned pre-season that um, before with your ball buy into that, but how how important is pre-season to get that right? How important is it that it sets it up for the remainder of the season as a whole? Yeah, well, I think um, after the VAR season, I mean, I heard a bit of Wayne talking about last week. Um, I don't think we really all understood the effect it had on us mentally that long season. So the pre-season preparations weren't good enough from a from a player's point of view, really. You know, the sessions were still there, the sessions were still good. But the way it finished and the way you spoke about earlier about the effect it had on your family... Um, and your work commitments, I think in that sort of summer period, it sort of formed a little bit into, uh, this is me chance where I can get some brownie points back with the missus. It's where I really should be going to work and help out this weekend because I got let go early on all those all those nights. And I think that's maybe where it didn't really work, where the season we've just had, that pre-season, everyone was there every session unless they're on holiday. Um and that that is a, a major part of getting the preparations right for the for the season. Um, everyone comes back pretty fit, mainly probably. I'm at the back usually, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, no, everyone everyone comes back fit, and that allows Paul and Wayne to start getting us into a way of playing and understanding what everyone's job is uh, if they're playing in that position. I suppose that's where you spoke of the adaptability about some players. Uh, can they play that? Yes, but then it's knowing what to do when they're in that position when perhaps they've not been playing there. So be- because Wayne Paul so thorough in making sure everyone understands their jobs, if they're playing left back, right back, so they feel whatever, everyone knows the position, the job of that person. So yeah, that's been a, a massive factor, and that's obviously pre season time you get the ch- ch- uh, chance to do that. But also as important as pre-season is, the off-season is also important. I mean, now it's a difficult situation because we don't know when football will return. We can hope it will be for the start of the new season, but no one can really say. How difficult has it been sticking to the fitness regimes that they've they've set you? Have they had to adapt them? Which obviously, your one exercise a day could be taking your son for a walk. You know, that could be your exercise for the day at that point. Obviously, now it's unlimited. How difficult has it been? What are the challenges that you've faced so far from it? It's just the mental side of it again. It's um, having that drive and dedication and commitment to keep doing, keep on going out and doing it. So when we finally can play again, everyone's ready. It's going to take someone two or three months to just get themselves back to where they should be when we go back. So it, again, it's that's the commitment that you talk about. It's you know, it's all well and good having a few beers here and there and having a nice barbecue and the sun's out, but if you do nothing, you're going to become unfit, aren't you? So it's that dedication to have a bit of a blowout, right, you need to go and do something about it now. I think we're lucky with a lot of the players in our team that they have all they all know that and appreciate what they, what they need to do to make sure they're ready to play football. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. I mean, you all had a Zoom call the other night. I saw um, on Lee Jackson's Instagram, that's what you were up to. Wayne mentioned it last week. How was that just seeing some of the players again uh, I'm sure you talked at length over various different things, but what was it like just seeing all the players together again? Well, you say all the players. There's a, but, there's a couple of missing for <laughs> technology reasons, I think, or short of a few brain cells. <laughs> uh, You've got a name and shame? Oh, well, I think I think the um, the fans can realise that. But I don't know, Ryan Jackson perhaps, maybe. Maybe he was struggling. I don't know. I'll let you judge that one. Um, but no, it was it was a good get together with the lads, and uh, it's the first time we've seen each other since the Barn Oldswick game. So um, yeah, it's good to have a, an hour or so and a chat and a bit of a laugh and see how everyone's doing. I mean, what do you hope to achieve next season? That was a bit of a cliche question because obviously you want to perform well over every single competition that we're playing. But is there some for you that you'd like to see an improvement in over some others? Yeah, well, I think in the article we spoke about the other week. Um, the Vars, I think, was a bit of a disappointing one this season, going out at um, 
Presswich, I think. Was it Presswich? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, away there. Um, that was a bit of disappointing just because it was the first first round and it was obviously a lot of us have got the memories from a couple of years ago, so we, we would like to go on a bit of a run on that. Um, I've had a few bus journeys back, really. That's the main reason we want those. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd quite like some of them bus journeys as well. <laughs> I'm sure you did, yeah. So, you know, that, that was disappointing. Um, I say, we were still in the semi-final of the Macron Cup, which is a tournament we take seriously, and we're looking to retain that. Um, and we were doing well in the league. So, I think they're the three main ones, main ones for us. And fingers crossed we can have a good go at all three of them again next season. What improvements do you think you can make as yourself personally and then also as the squad as a whole going on from next season? Obviously, we set the pace this year. Obviously, it might not account for anything, but the season did happen. What do you think that we can all improve on as a club and as a team to make next year even better? Because everyone's going to raise the standards and we know that we need to again as well. What do you think that we could do? Um, it's a tough question, I suppose. Um, as a team, I suppose we can always improve. Um, we let a few goals in um, I know Goody mentioned a couple of games where we let four in which is unthinkable really um, so obviously that's something we can improve on but although we scored a lot of goals I still think we probably just could have scored a lot more so I think they're probably, obviously it's, that is a cliche and it's pretty obvious defend better and score more goals but <laughs> that generally generally is it um, yeah I think they're probably that, that is probably it you know, set pieces, and I, I hear a bit of groaning on set pieces when they when they don't go directly into the box. But you can have that argument, with goody. <laughs> so, moving on to some other different types of questions. Now, I was looking doing some research um, about yourself on the club website, and one of the things that it said is that your hidden talent is touching your nose with your tongue. <laughs> so, when did you first realise you could do it? And second of all, can you do it? Yes, I can do it. <laughs> Um, I'd have no idea when I found out I could do it. I've no idea. It must be um, my son's got a long tongue, so maybe it's uh, in the genes. <laughs> could you give us an example? Could you do it now for us? Yeah, fair play. That's quite impressive. That. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who do you think the funniest player in the '74 squad is whilst you've been there? So it might not have to be in the squad. In fact, I will do the squad now and then also whilst you've been there from the whole time. Okay. Um, the squad now. I mentioned before, but I think Ryan Jackson, just because he's so thick, he does make me laugh. Um, so maybe laughing at him isn't the same as laughing with him. Uh, <laughs> Cal Gardner, he's, he's quite funny. He cracks me up. Um, probably one of those two. Yeah. From the beginning, it'd have to be Conkey, Matt Conkey. Absolute nut job. <laughs> <laughs> and if you had to pick your dream five-a-side 74 team, who would it be? You can pick yourself or... If you don't want to pick yourself, you can have it. Just pick a normal five. Okay, five aside. Have I got a goalie? It's up to you. We'll leave it up to you. Keeper. Um, gee, this is a good question, this one. Well, I've got to have Scotty. I haven't had for goals. I've got to have Scotty. Um... Wow, this is awesome. Cal Garden's got to go in for his, for his six aside. <laughs> he killed him and put him in money, play for England and all that. Um, Not he mentions it. <laughs> that's two. Who else can I have? I'll go with. I'll go with Tony in that because no one's going to score past him in those little goals. That's true. And. Wow, I wasn't expecting this question. It's a thinker. Yeah, it is, yeah. Needed a bit of prior warning for this one. Um, three. Who else can I have? Sam Air. I love Sam Air, so Sam Air can go in. He can keep the ball moving for him. And we'll go with... We'll go with Mike Corral for his adaptability. And up and down, yeah. He can play as well. It's a good answer, that. That's, to be fair, that's a good team. <laughs> might do all right, that one, I hope. Oh, yeah, it might do. Uh, now we'll move over to some of the Twitter and Facebook questions. Uh, this one's from the Two Bags of, uh, two bags of Sand fanzine. Uh, can you give us a quote for the front cover of the next edition? 
Who writes it? That's I want to know who writes it. I I'm not going to give his alias away on here, but right. I know who it is. I'll tell you after. <laughs> Quote for two bags of sand. Have they got nothing else better to do? <laughs> there thing. we go. There we go. Uh, uh, the next question is from Sam Hind. Uh, what's had more action, the working man's kettle or the running shoes? Well, the kettle has definitely had more use than the running shoes because I've not really been running. I've been on the bike. I've been getting to the bike in a little bit. Ah, oh, okay. Good answer. I've got away with that one. Who's had the, who's been the most positive influences on your football career? That's from Phil Burgess. Now, I did notice in the reply to that, Kyle said that he was. Yeah, it's not Kyle Riley. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the biggest influence I've had on my, on my football um, has got to be my dad from, a, from an early age, um, playing the garden. Started taking me to United when I was four, so... Up until recent, I've always seen pretty good football, which I think helps in the way I sort of try and play the game. Um, and he's still an influence now. He always rings me up after a game and tells me what I did, well, basically what I did wrong, which is nice. <laughs> usually. So, um, yeah, no, he's still a good influence and he's probably the biggest fan as well. Um, I think Mick Ward, who he, he's often watching us now as well. He's good mates with my dad. Um but he used to run the junior football teams from a young age. So he was one who sort of taught me football and he played midfield um, for Hinkley United a few years, well, many years ago. But because um, I've always sort of played similar positions, he's had a big influence on on playing and sort of trying to move the ball and, and that sort of thing. So, yeah, I think probably those two are the, the biggest influences I've had. And then if you go into sort of playing non-league levels, I've, been quite lucky. I've had some pretty good managers who've put some trust in me from a young age. I remember Neil Gill at Al Sager and Whitten Reserves. He started chucking me in there. Um, you know, Jim Vince gave me some good opportunities at, at Witten Albion. So, yeah, probably a mixture of those four in their own little different ways. Uh, what's it like to play in the same team as your brothers? And that's from Vicky. It's, it's really good. Um, I think... It helps that I think they sort of respect me a little bit in the job as captain and, and do take the criticism when um, maybe I give them a bit more than I should do. But I think because I know them well and I've seen them playing so many times, I know what they're capable of. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's good from that point of view. Um, yeah, it's, it's enjoyable. I and mean, it makes it easy for me, Dad, because I've only got to come watch one team then so rather than trying to decide which one to pick on a Saturday morning. Uh, what's your fondest memory as skipper so far for 1874 that's from Ben Spencer the one that sta- well there's a couple that stand out but I think the main one would probably have to be the Macron Cup last season uh, lifting that that was a, a proud moment as captain to to lift that and probably the first major trophy we've won um, as a club so that was a that was a special one um, and this could be the same answer for this question. What's been your favourite game in the 1874 shirt? And that's from Mark Hammond. Favourite game? Well, that's it. That is a difficult one because I don't often enjoy games when I'm playing them, which I know sounds strange. Um, more because I'm more focused on the result. So I'll go for the, the Witten Albion um, final for the Manchester Cup. But I think mainly because we were we were two or three nil up, and I could actually enjoy that one as a final a little bit more rather than with having the pressure which usually comes. But I think there's there's loads of games that I could probably have picked. But yeah, I'll go, I'll go for that one. So just to, just to round it off, then winning a game like that against Witten Albion or any of your local rivals, how much sweeter is that as a player where you come through and then you manage to win in a game of that sort of magnitude as well? Yeah, it is. Obviously, that is where being local, being from the area, sort of has a big impact um, and probably means more to myself and the likes of Phil Lee than it does some of the other other people. But, um, yeah, it's always sweet to win a derby. I don't think that'll ever change for, for anyone who ever plays in one. It's all about bragging rights. So it was, uh, yeah, extra special to win that one. Cheers, Matt.
And thank you, everyone. Thank you, Matt. That's been excellent speaking to you there. I hope you're doing well in, uh, during lockdown and I'm sure that we'll see you soon at Townfield when football does return. That's it for this edition. Please let us know that your thoughts, um, whether you want it shorter, some of the players that you'd like uh, to feature. I've got next week's already lined up with one old familiar face alongside someone who we haven't seen for a while on the pitch, but he'll be making a return to this next week. So thank you all and we shall see you next week. <laughs>